come into the finishing straight now. And she's got the baton. It's Shelly Ann Fraser Price with Jasmine Todd for the USA. It's Jamaica all the way. Jamaica first across the line. USA in second. It's not even close to a strange question to hear someone ask, how is it possible for a country that small to produce some of the fastest people on the planet? The country has approximately 3 million people. While we saw the dominance of Hussein Bolt for almost a decade, the women have always been a force to be reckoned with on the global stage. Dating back to 1980, when legendary sprinter Merlene Adi captured a bronze medal in the 200-meter final in Moscow. To think that since that day 33 years ago, Jamaica has always left the Olympics with a medal in that event on the women's side. As a result, they now equal the United States in medal count over 200 meter. With just those facts, it isn't hard to tell Jamaica is dominating. And, and look at this, Foster Hilton is coming through. Foster Hilton and Lopez sleep. Lopez sleep and Foster Hilton. Foster Hilton is going to become the world champion. Lopes. However, to tell how they managed to get to this point is a bit more difficult. Well, not really. The thing is, Jamaica has a system where it is pretty much difficult for potential athletes with quality not to be spotted and brought into athletics. The story of Usain Bolt being spotted in training for another sport, then recommended to take up sprinting, is well documented. This happens quite a lot in the country. Meanwhile, in other nations like the USA, for example, there are more options for speedy children. Football being the biggest sport you could think of. The draw of other sports in other countries nullifies the chance of bigger countries to make full use of the larger pools of athletes. So they have to work with children who actually love the sport and encouraged to do so by parents or the occasional athlete that coaches manage to convince. This means that despite European countries and the USA having a larger number of participants, they might not have the very best their country can offer. Who knows, the next world record holder for the 100 could be playing WNBA or Rugby Sevens. So with a country like Jamaica, who has the full use of their athletes pool, they are bound to find the very best quality on the island. And it so happens that quality is better than what the rest of the world has to offer. That answer does seem simple, and it would be easy to accept if we didn't witness three Jamaican women take all three medals in the 100-meter final at the recently concluded Olympic Games. That leads to the other part of the answer, which is the fact that they had the best sprint coach alive assisting them. Shelly Ann, Sharika, and Elaine all have one thing in common apart from winning medals in the 100 meter. And that is the fact that they trained at the MVP Track Club, which is built on Francis's philosophy. This man owns the last four Olympic gold medals in the 100 meter for women. Keep in mind, he is the only coach to do so. And that record might improve if Elaine shows up in Paris in three years time. It is safe to say most of the dominance comes from that camp. His coaching principles mirrors that of Bud Winter, the greatest sprint coach of all time, a man who produced multiple world record holders in all individual sprint events, the likes of Lee Evans, Tommy Smith, and Ronnie Smith. With the culture aiding coaches to have the highest quality of athletes the country can offer, added with a system that has proven ageless and created champions, it will take some incredible work taking these Jamaican women off the podium anytime soon. Now advancing to the front and Fraser Price is starting to run away with it as they come to the line, an easy victory for Shelly and Fraser Price in dominating fashion.